for my wife. Hallelujah. 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 Is this on? Can everybody hear me? Oh. Glory, glory. How's everybody today? Glory. Are you blessed and highly favored? Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Everyone has a choice. Everyone say, I got the power to choose. Through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Make sure I choose right. Would you turn to the book of Habakkuk? Chapter 2. Glory to God. Habakkuk. It's on page 1080 in my book. <laughs> Glory to God. <clears throat> oh, yes. How many of y'all know we are in the last moments? Things are happening rapidly and quickly. We are watching a tremendous change. You know, <clears throat> we're watching seasons and transitions and all kinds of things spiritually and physically. We're seeing such a battle right now, especially in, in the global arena. Not only globally, but nationally. We see a, a tremendous battle and the reason why there's so much battle and things are going to continue to battle even more and more and more, things are going to increase, is because the enemy, first of all, knows that he's being exposed. In the beginning of 2017, the word of the Lord came in and spoke about the arena of double exposure. There would be a tremendous amount of exposure in this year. Man, we never realized how much exposure would be coming. In fact, he called it explosion. Which, which meant a, a magnitude of high exposure. So we're watching um, in the arena of this exposure of wickedness. What people used to call good is actually evil. What people call evil now seems to be good to them. So you're seeing this transition and tremendous amount where it's finally, it's going to max out eventually. And right now, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is trying to draw his people back. Bring him back into fellowship. Bring him back because they're missing so much. God is releasing messages in the arena of corporately so that his people can come and get filled and refreshed because without worship, you can't get filled. And without being filled in the spirit, you can't get aligned. And so your vision still stays the same. You're, you're still in the arena of a physical vision instead of a spiritual vision. And God wants to bring us into a place right now, what we call divine vision. Because we go from seasons, and in seasons, there are multiple visions in each season that we're in. And Habakkuk chapter 2, is everybody there? Yeah. First four verses, first three verses, yeah, four verses. Let's speak it together. He said, I will stand my watch, and I will set myself on the rampart, and watch to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer when I am what? Corrected. Corrected. So there's got to be an area where you are not only watching, but you're willing to hear. So you're seeing. This is where there's relationship. Again, that goes back to what David even said. I always set the Lord before me. If the Lord is not before you, then you don't have relationship. Then you're, we become stinky religious. And this is where God wants relationship. He wants you to know his voice. He wants you to know how he thinks. Now we can gather all he thinks. Amen. And he, well, his greatest delight is for us to see what he sees. That is his greatest delight. So he says here, look at it. So in other words, here he is standing as a watch, waiting to see what God is going to do to correct him. Why? Because he always is looking for correction. You and I should be looking for conviction. We should look for correction. Why? To keep us in line. Because we easily stray and don't even realize it. Verse 2, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision 
and make it plain on tablets that he may run who what? Reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Now, appointed times are associated with seasons. And in every season, what we call a divine season, which we talked about already, I think it was Tuesday, divine seasons. In the divine season, we have visions. There are short-term visions and there are long-term visions. Visions are given by God. It's a divine vision that God gives you. It's a plan for you to do. So when you complete it, then a promise is released. Because nothing is, not, no promises are released until you complete what God asked you to do. In fact, you had to repent, didn't you? And accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to have salvation. That was God's plan called grace. Okay, verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. And at the end, it will what? It will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, and it will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Faith is the area where there's connection. Because without faith, there is no connection. Amen. Faith is your connection. So we see that there's a divine vision. And I'm not saying that people have visions because sometimes they, they see things out of their soulish arena or soulish desire. Or maybe they ate too much pizza whatever it may be. But so th these are carnal visions. They're not, th there's a difference between the divine vision, amen, and the soulish vision. <laughs> but a vision that, the, the, a divine vision, this vision penetrates from the eternal realm into the temporary realm into the heart of the called. In other words, of the heart of the called. Are you called? Well, then you are, then it's coming into your heart. And its purpose is to prepare uh, for the new, for the divine new season. In other words, God brings us vision as we begin to step into a new season. Does everybody get it? And, that's, and again, it's a short vision. So he's preparing you. Sometimes he, pre he gives you a vision um, coming out of the old season to prepare you to come into the new season. And you, it, it may seem so strange sometimes. And this vision that God gives you is like a plan. It's like a plan for building. In other words, a, a, a contractor has plans for buildings. And on each, some of these plans are quite thick because there's multiple floors and all kinds of things. You got trusses, you got whatever, electrical, plumbing, whatever it is. And so each plan, you have to go through each page for each plan. Each plan is considered a vision. It's a short-term vision. Its purpose is to build a spiritual building. Amen? Okay. So this is a vision that penetrates from the eternal realm into the temporary realm. And it comes into the heart of the individuals. They're called the called. To prepare for the divine new season. And in this, it's continuously unfolding God's will. And its purpose is to fulfill your complete mission. In other words, you and I were sent into this world to fulfill a mission. God didn't save you just to sit home. God didn't save you just to be a husband and a wife. Amen? Or be a businessman. He saved me and you to be about his business. So that we could fulfill that mission. And that mission is long term. It's from the day you were saved to the day you go home. Amen. That is the mission that, in fact, for some of us, it took a while to get into that mission. Some of us had to go to jail, prison, near-death experiences, whatever it was. We had to hit the wall of reality to begin that mission. But in the uh, long term, in this mission, there are multiple seasons, and in each season, there are multiple visions. So everybody got it? Cool. Now, the foundation of your mission has three areas, which we've talked about before. I'm going to say this is the foundation of your vision. In this, in, um, the foundation of the mission, you and I are called to battle. Amen? We're called to what? Battle. battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. This is the foundation of the mission. So this is continuous. 
And the destiny is to infiltrate the world system with the talents and abilities God's given you to rescue souls. Again, the foundation of your mission, which is from the day you were born again to the day you leave this planet, you are called to battle. Your purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And your destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue souls. To accomplish this, to accomplish this, you must be in touch with God. You must be in touch with Him. What? To receive the vision. Amen? And then what happens, it's our responsibility now to interpret the vision. I mean, the vision that God gives you. That's our responsibility. He gives it through the spirit of the living God. This is where, when you're in touch with him, the Holy Spirit will give you the interpretation of the vision. Because one of the things he interprets in the vision is God's timing. He interprets in the vision God's timing. And he does this by divine wisdom and divine understanding. Revealed by the Holy Spirit. That's why we talk about you must be in touch with God. And you can only be in touch with God through the Holy Spirit. Remember, wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Again, your mission has divine seasons with divine vision. When the vision, bless you, when the vision is interpreted with God, as you begins to interpret, you begin to, it begins to unfold to you uh, what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do it, and when you're supposed to do it. It's called revelation. It's called revelation. So uh, uh, a vision that's interpreted is called revelation. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Just wear long underwear when you come to service. It's called under armor. It should be your priestly garments to keep you warm. <laughs> oh, yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Divine vision. Or what we might say, divine visions. Divine visions. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Is everybody there? 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1 through 3. Let's speak it. Do we again begin to command ourselves or do we need, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our what? epistle written in our hearts, known and read by what? All men. Now, you are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the what? Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of the flesh, that is, of the heart. And that's what we were talking about in Habakkuk, or the vision, he said, write it on tablets, right? So that whoever reads it, well, who's supposed to read it? You. It's supposed to be written in your heart and interpreted by the Spirit so it comes to remembrance. Now, eventually, as you fulfill the vision, it begins to dissipate. Now, there's a long-term vision. Hopefully, that vision, as you see yourself entering eternal life, you know, and there may be, may be a long term arena of this vision of the mission to fulfill something. But before you get that, then we have short term ones. And these short term ones are constantly building you. Amen. Divine vision is not in the head, but where? In the heart. See, carnal vision and soulish visions are in the head. As you begin to fulfill the vision, it begins to fade away. 
Again, they're like blueprints of a of structural building. Only you're building an eternal purpose in a temporary realm. You're building a what? An eternal purpose in a temporary realm. In 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the what? The power of God, through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Are we in the last times? You betcha. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Anybody going through a trial? If you didn't raise your hand, you're a liar. <laughs> Every one of us is going through a trial. Verse 7. Why? That the genuineness of your faith, your connection, does everybody see it? The genuineness of your faith, that is your connection. That is how much are you in touch? Being much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to the praise and honor and the glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seeing you love, though now you do not see him, but yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hmm. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, <laughs> who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching out and what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glories that would follow. So we see something powerful here is the genuineness of your faith, the connection, the in touch you have with God to bring the vision from heaven to earth. To bring the vision from where? Heaven to earth, from the eternal realm to the temporary realm. Again, you cannot build on feelings. And this is where many people, many people replace the word of God or word of promise for feelings. And then they go off course of the vision because they're led by how they feel instead of by what is truth. And they fail because the enemy comes to exchange what is divine, a divine vision to a carnal one. Does everybody get it? Why? He, then he brings his focus on you. See, when you lose your focus on the Lord, the flow stops. Then your focus is on you. And what happens then when a, a carnal vision comes, there's self-righteousness. It creates, it creates swelled heads instead of a swelled heart for God. Amen? Your heart should be swelled for God. James chapter 3. Is everybody okay? Man, we are in such exciting time right now. Think about You and I are alive right now. We're alive. In the final generation to see, to see the Lord's return. We are alive right now because of that. He chose me and you to be alive at this time. We should be dead. I should be dead, that's for sure. I was supposed to go to prison for life. I should be dead. I've died enough times, but God rescued me every single time to fulfill the mission. Amen? James 3.13 Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. 
But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly and sensual and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield or submit, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace powerful wisdom from above keeping the heart pure and keeping it in position or what we call aligning with the holy spirit remember we need this wisdom to fulfill the vision don't we amen hebrews chapter three that's why you were supposed to ask for wisdom every day Such crazy stuff. All of these religious fables where people are always going, man, don't ask for patience. It's going to bring you trouble. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. It's known as endurance. <laughs> Believe me, you don't have to ask for it, though. You just need to ask for endurance. <laughs> God is going to bring it to you whether you ask for it or not. <laughs> but those are those that are not in touch. Those that are in touch don't live for themselves. They live for him. Oh, glory. Hebrews 3. Is everybody there? Amen. Hebrew. Did Hebrew this morning? Amen. I sure did. <laughs> Verse 7. Come on, sit down. Hebrews 3, verse 7. Let's speak it together. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, as the Holy Spirit says, you better be listening then. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years, Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my way. Why? Okay, so they, when they went astray in their heart, did they lose vision? Yes. Because they went astray in their heart, didn't they? They lost the vision. That's why they grumbled and complained. Does everybody get it? Remember when they first got released from Egypt, man, they were all happy and blessed and thanking God and whatever. And every trial they came up to, they grumbled and complained. Even when they saw the Red Sea split and they saw all kinds of stuff, miracles, they never had to change their shoes, praise God. Everything grew with them. Hallelujah. Permanent Taylor. In verse 11, so he said, I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it was called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. When you are not hearing God, your heart is becomes hardened. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who having heard rebelled, indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Wow. Hear his voice, or you'll harden your heart. And again, then you cannot fulfill the vision or the mission. And what begins to happen, you reject a new divine season that God is preparing. Obedience will carry you into the new season. Obedience will carry you into the new season. Not your emotions, not your feelings, and not what you think. Your 
obedience. He says, if you love me, then you'll obey me. Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. What carries you into the new season? Your obedience. Oh, hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 7. He says, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Right? This persuasion, everyone say persuasion. Now, where does this persuasion come from? Certainly not God. It's from demonic influence. Amen? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens, leavens a whole lump. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who troubled you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to freedom. Only do not use this freedom as an opportunity to fulfill the flesh, but through love serve one another. One of the reasons why many people, I want to say, disrespect this freedom is because they lose touch. They're not in touch. So that conviction isn't there. That relationship isn't there. You know, many people run when they're corrected. Every time a correction comes, they feel offended. It's because they're still too alive. They're still fighting for their lives. They're in a place of what we call survival instead of surrender. That's why God says, surrender all. Cast your cares upon me. Surrender. Why? Because he can do a lot better than we can. Amen. Amen. For all the law was fulfilled in one word, verse 14. Even in this, you shall love the, your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become consumed by one another. I say then what? Walk in the Spirit. Well, you can't walk in the Spirit unless you're filled with the Spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and they are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish or that your carnal man desires. Filled, then walk in the spirit. Why? Because this allows you to align. You must align. Now when you're aligning with the spirit, there's three things that you're going to align with. You must align your will Again, you must align your will, your mind, and your heart with the Holy Spirit. And what this does is it maintains the flow of wisdom and understanding. Why? For the vision. So it can be interpreted and directed. And so you can fulfill your full mission. Many are spiritually poverty-stricken. Many are spiritually poverty-stricken because of misalignment with the Spirit. I'm going to say it again. Many are spiritually poverty-stricken because of misalignment with the Spirit. They're still living and making decisions by how they feel instead of by the leading of the Spirit in truth. Okay, so these alignments are your will, your mind, and your heart. Remember, the vision is given into the heart. Amen? Amen. This is where that's interpreted. Second Peter chapter 1. It's a divine vision. Carnal visions swell the head. Divine visions swell the heart. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 2, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2, is everybody there? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in what? The knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus. As his divine power, everyone say divine power. 
has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, which is endurance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours and abound. If these things are yours and abound, you will never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This divine power is given to me and you to fulfill the divine mission. Amen? Amen. And in this divine mission with divine seasons and divine visions of his plan, worship is the aligning factor. Worship is the aligning factor to maintain vision in the new season. Worship is the divining, is the, 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 the main factor. Worship is the lining factor to maintain vision in a new season with joy, peace, and righteousness. Worship. Worship. That's where it says, seek him with all of your heart. Worship him. It is the aligning factor to maintain your vision in the new season with joy and peace and righteousness. Ephesians chapter 3. In verse 14. Is everybody there? For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That's that divine power. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Faith is that connection. Has everybody got it? That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend or what he means interpret. That you may be able to interpret with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. In other words, he wants you to interpret the visions in every season to fulfill the mission. Oh, praise God. That's the fullness for me and you. Verse 20, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we could ever ask or think according to the what? The power, that divine power that what? Works in us. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Christ is able to do far above all we could ever ask or think according to the power that works in us. This is aligning yourself with the Spirit. Through what? Worship. Aligning yourself with the Spirit brings a power to me and you so that you and I have the ability to cooperate. You cannot cooperate with God without the power of God. So when you cooperate with Him through the power of the Spirit, His will will be released, his purpose and the desires. 
And what begins to happen is he brings his plan down to the man. Amen? He brings his plan down to the man. And this is what we call in touch. Are you in touch? Are you in touch? Are you in touch? Are you in touch? That's what we got to ask ourselves. Gosh, am I in touch? Am I hearing? Am I seeing? What am I doing? Now, I'm going to share with you, there's going to be times when you don't know what the heck you're doing. It doesn't mean you're out of touch. Has everybody got it? Only if you're going down the wrong path, you're out of touch. When you don't know what the heck you're doing, you stay on course until you get direction. Amen? It's real simple. You don't change course. You stay on course. Because the enemy will try and bring a false vision. If he knows you're not aligned, he knows what's going on. Look at the enemy ain't stupid. He knows what's what. Quit trying to fulfill your vision. You're to interpret the vision. He will fulfill it. Somebody get it. Well, and how is he going to fulfill it? By your cooperation with the wisdom and understanding. This is where people fall short. This is where people get so discouraged. They grow weary. Gosh, Lord, when? When? I mean, everybody's got a when in them. When? But don't let it discourage you. Amen? Don't let it bring you weariness. You stay on course and maintain. Why? Because he ain't done with you yet. He's still something he wants to kill. He still wants to crush something. Let's go right to that for a second while we're talking about that. Let's go to Jeremiah 18. <laughs> Jeremiah 18. We're going to skip along here so we can get this understanding. Jeremiah 18. Is everybody there? Verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Hello. He'll cause you to hear. But first of all, Jeremiah heard him from the beginning. So God was sending him into a place so he can hear more. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. The wheel represents the Holy Spirit. And the vessel that he had made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel, and it seemed good to the potter to make it. So what happens, what God does for me and you, we're on that potter's wheel, which is known as the Spirit. And he's forming you to prepare you for the next season. And this prepare, preparation for the next season all the time is also conforming you into his image. Now again, you cannot bring into the new season what he didn't want you, what, what he wanted you to leave in the old season. If you bring into the new season what he's told you not to bring in, the new season gets contaminated and re, returns back to the old season. And there will be no advancement. So in this, he's always trying to put us, we're going from glory to glory, turning into his image and image all the time. So there's going to be times when you just don't understand what is up and you found yourself crushed. <laughs> Why? Because it's a remold time. It's a remold time. Sometimes it's because a person backslides and goes back into sin. Or God is just remolding you because there are some things that you don't see or know that he's trying to make room for. <coughs> is everybody okay? So we go back onto that potter's wheel. What's it for? For you to be transformed into his image. 
and you go on, listen, the potter wheel is a part of your life. This is not a one-time event. I'm going to tell you it's seasonal. It is seasonal. Every new season brings a fresh wheel <laughs> and a fresh crushing. And if you run from it, you won't enter it. See, people get offended so easy when there's counsel, correction, or direction, or when God chastens people, you, know, you. We should be looking for it. We should want it. Thank you, Lord, for slapping me in the head. Thank you. Thank you for exposing that, because I didn't realize it offended you. Because many times people become complacent and don't even realize it. They become comfortable. And sometimes God is trying to get us out of the comfortable zone. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 So welcome to the new season with a divine vision and a new wheel. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. <coughs> Is everybody there? Praise God. Let's speak it. However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature. What he means by this. Again, the word of God is three-dimensional, isn't it? Past, present, and future. And there's also depths to this. He means by this mature in a line. He's not talking about how long you've been a believer or how much knowledge you have. He's talking about in this, he's speaking about whether you're in alignment with the spirit or not. Is everybody with me? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Now, what does he say? Okay. However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature, Mature yet not the wisdom of this age. Nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom that is from God in the mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Again, when he's saying, I'm speaking to those who are mature, what does the word mature mean here? In alignment. Verse 9, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now, again, he's prepared what? He's prepared seasons. Amen. He's prepared visions to fulfill the mission. But he's saying the vision, he's talking about in the heart. Well, isn't that the divine vision from God is in the heart, not the head. And it's released and revealed by the spirit. Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. That's why it's so important to be aligned with the spirit. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world. In other words, we rejected the spirit of the world, who is the prince of power of error, and the wisdom of the world. But the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. That must, you're only going to know them through the interpretation. Of the spirit. So everybody got it. And then you'll know what to do with them. Through the wisdom and understanding God gives you. And verse 13. These things we speak. These things we also speak. Not in words which man's wisdom teaches. I'm going to say that again. These things we also speak. Not in words which man's wisdom teaches. There's a difference between man's wisdom. And God's wisdom. There's divine wisdom and carnal wisdom but which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, the carnal man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. 
For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the what? The mind of Christ. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 12. In verse 3. Hebrews 12, verse 3. Are you getting this? Amen. Praise God. To, uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, verse 3. Is everybody there? Good. I'm getting there. All right. Let's speak it together. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons or daughters. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, but be, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. For if you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten or correct? But if you are without chastening, you are all have become partakers. Then you are what? Illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we've had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and what? And live. So he says, we are in need of endurance. That is called patience. Endurance is patience. So when everything seems to be not doing what it's supposed to be doing, you maintain course. You continue to endure. You be disciplined. You stay consistent. You stay alert. You be ready. Because that's what the word says, in season and out, because sometimes it feels like you're not even in a season, but you really are. Amen? And I'm going to close at 1 Peter chapter 5. Divine vision. In the divine season for the fulfilling of the divine mission. First Peter chapter five and verse six. Hallelujah. This is where he says, Count it all joy, right? When you fall into various trials, those are challenges. Listen, if you think that the enemy is gonna sit back and let you fulfill vision, destiny, your mission then you're deceived because he's going to do everything he can to get you off course. Just because you know the course doesn't mean you'll stay on it. All oh, glory. Verse 6, therefore do what? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Is that rain? Thank God I left the car home. Therefore, what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you when? In due time. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Be sober. That means alert. Be vigilant. That means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, demons, devils, whatever, they walk about like a roaring lion, seeking whom they may devour or put off course. They will do everything they can to prevent you from fulfilling what you have been called to do. Well, if God gave me the vision, why won't he fulfill it? Because he requires your cooperation. Remember, you are called to battle. Amen? Your purpose 
is to destroy Satan's kingdom. What? From preventing the kingdom of God from expanding. And the thing he's going to do is come to steal your identity. If he can steal your identity, he's got you. And your destiny is to infiltrate the world system. That is the foundation of your mission. That must be upcat. So you must be alert. You must be consistent. You must constantly feed your spirit, man. You must worship. He said, he who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood has eternal life. Amen? Amen. Which is his word in the spirit. The devil is seeking whom he may devour, mislead, and push off course. He said, resist him. Hello? Resist him. Don't let him rest in, on your property, on your territory, on your body. Do not let him rest. Well, I'm not feeling good. So what? Get rid of it. Don't let him rest. Quit allowing your feelings to dictate who you are or where you're at or your decisions. Amen? Look at everybody doesn't feel good sometimes. Amen? Sometimes you're fighting a bug. Sometimes you're fighting demons. Sometimes you're fighting yourself. But there's a constant fight. But don't let it rest on you. Drive it off. Get rid of it. Why? Because when you become discouraged. When you become discouraged, you're off course already. Oh, hallelujah. Resist him. Resist him. Resist him. Where? Steadfast in the faith. Why? Because you're in touch, your connection. You, you, why? You, because of that connection, you have divine power in you. He is in you is greater than he is in the world. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are more than a conqueror. As a man thinks, so he is. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you're not the only one when you feel like you're the only one. You're not. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you suffered for a while. Suffered means tried, challenged. Amen? You will be tried and challenged. Uh, maybe even put on the wheel. That's a part of your suffering. Why? So you can be turned more and more into his image and likeness. After you have suffered for a while. Now, what's going to happen after you have suffered for a while? What's its purpose? Is to perfect you, to establish you, to strengthen you, and to settle you so you're immovable. That's the purpose. Amen? And to God be all the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever. Divine visions in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. Again, we ask for your protection of the seed that's been empowered into each and every one. Protecting it with the blood. Let it penetrate every part of our being. Bring to remembrance the things you have spoken to us today. And quicken us, Lord. Quicken us to the things you have prepared so that we may see, so that we may hear, and so that we may follow. In